We at Andritz Paper and Board drive your success through cost-efficient innovations and we form sustainable relationships. From stock preparation to the real, including fabrics and rolls, automation, pumps and services, we deliver solutions for complete lines. We are experts in rebuilds and conversions, including project management, engineering, auxiliaries, electrification and control systems, startup assistance, training and after-sales service. Our mission is to create value in two ways, by improving the value of your mill's production operations and by adding value in the way we work together with you. Our service specialists help protect and extend the life of your equipment from virtually any OEM and lower your overall operating costs. Let's foresee digitally with Mattress. Risk-based management, remote assistance and real-time support are only some of the key benefits. In addition, we offer innovative traditional automation solution packages such as hardware-independent control systems. Cost-efficient innovations for paper and board production. Our customers worldwide rely on us. Expertise, know-how and innovation. This is what we at Andritz Paper and Board stand for. Dear ladies and gentlemen, first of all, a very warm welcome to all of you kindly joining our Andritz webinar for European board and packaging producers today. Thank you for reserving time in order to participate and to spend time together with us. My name is Wolfgang Lassofa and I'm globally responsible for the division Paper, Fiber and Recycling and I'm delighted to introduce our webinar today. Challenging times such as these during the pandemic call for adapted measures and actions, and we had to learn over the last year how to operate and communicate in different new ways. Fortunately, there is technology available supporting us to do this, and we are pleased to have so many of you joining us online today. This also signals to us how important the topic of cost-efficient innovations in board and packaging paper is for all of you. In our today's webinar, we will introduce the latest Andres technologies and innovations in order to support you to become more cost efficient in production at your board and paper operations. We all are very much focused on sustainability and reduction of OPEX and the current environment accelerated the development of innovations, especially in the area of digitalization, remote commissioning and startup assistance and autonomous operation. Andritz has developed a number of interesting solutions which could support you to improve efficiencies and paper qualities and finally as well lower your production costs. Please feel free to challenge us uh, and ask questions and don't hesitate to contact us after the webinar if you have any other questions or if you're interested in other topics regarding paper production which are not covered by today's webinar. Once again, thank you for joining and I wish you an inspiring time together with us. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our paper webinar. I'm not sure if have you seen me, if you have seen my camera already, but I was unmuted, but now everything works well and a warm welcome from my side. I hope you enjoy the presentations. During the presentations, you have the possibility to write your questions in the chat window. After each presentation, up to three questions will be answered. A few days after the webinar, you will receive an email with download link to all the materials. So um, at the end of the webinar, a window will pop up asking you to complete a survey. We would really appreciate your feedback and ideas. And right now we are coming to our first presentation. It deals with prime technologies, prime innovations from stock preparation, 
screening, thickening, and cleaning. Unfortunately, uh, one of our speaker, Mr. Christian Morales, has fallen ill. Mr. Mario Menapace is so kind as to step in for him. We can already see the first slide, Prime Technologies' latest developments in fiber preparation. And here is our first speaker, Mario. Your camera is on. Welcome to the webinar. Please start your presentation. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the first part of our 100th paper webinar. My name is Mario Menabache and I'm from the Paper Fiber and Recycling Division. I'm here to give a short presentation about the latest developments in fiber preparation. My presentation is divided into six parts and I will start with a short overview. As you might know, Andritz covers the complete process for the pulp and paper industry. Today, I want to focus on the newest product developments related to mechanical pulping recycling fiber and virgin fiber applications. My plan for the next couple of minutes is to introduce the latest prime technology for screening, thickening, cleaning and refining applications. Let us start with some details concerning the new prime screen X. The main parts I want to introduce are the top feed system, the prime rotor and foils, and the optimized basket's height to diameter ratio. These features lead to minimized wear, increased efficiency, and lower power consumption. The bulb suspension is fed under pressure to the top part of the screen. Due to this design, we can achieve a quick removal of heavy contaminants and longer lifetime of the rotor and the basket. As well, there is no need for any additional deoration pipes anymore. In addition, the streamlined rotor attachment and the clamped screen basket design reduces the maintenance and replacement work compared with conventional pressure screens. To complete the package, we have developed a new rotor and foil design. Please note that these new rotors can not only be installed in the new prime screens, they can be installed in any other screen types available on the market. As you can see here, we have already sold 51 prime screens. Some of them are already running. A couple will fall in a short term. The next hundredth generation of Sikina and fiber recovery filters will be the prime filter D. Within this filter, we have combined our latest high consistency and high freeness technology, as well our innovative backless disc filter sector. This filter perfectly suits all kinds of thickening and fiber recovery applications for recycled fiber, virgin fiber, and mechanical pulp applications. For thickening applications, it goes under the product name Prime Filter DT, DS for safe all applications. Using the already mentioned HHW technology and the wider distance between the discs and the outlet tube, this filter can be operated with a thicker fiber mat than usually. <clears throat> Due to the mentioned before features and the individual feed for each disc, we can assure less fiber mat peeling off and less thickening in the vet. The backless sector design combined with the CC technology has a 5% increased disc area. Furthermore, no additional filter bags are needed anymore. Once again, here a brief summary about the main benefits. Not mentioned until now, but still worse to do so, is the reduced energy demand and water consumption. This can be realized due to the high feeding consistency and the therefore reduced feed flow. Here are some of our latest references. In total, we have sold 30 units as per today. The vertical screw thickener, simply described, is a vertical configuration of our well-proofed horizontal screw press technology. This allows the equipment to run at lower feed consistency. In addition, the filling is assisted by gravity. The overall machine concept, concept ensures complete filled screw flights 
and provides additional dewatering forces. We achieve a very even dewatering due to maximized dewatering area and dewatering forces. Summarized, even at low feed consistency, a high outlet consistency can be achieved, considering equipment with a compact machine design and a very small footprint. Also, this is one of our latest innovations. We have already sold seven units in total. For the cleaning process, I'm allowed to present a new technology to be coming soon. The Prime Clean TO. This equipment combines two cleaning stages in one unit. During the trials we did in our pilot plant facility and at some installations at mill site, we have seen excellent sand removal results up to a feed consistency of 3%. Last but not least, I'm very happy to inform you that by today, Andritz has released a completely new product. The Twinflow Prime. This new low consistency refiner features a compact design, optimum operation conditions and the easier maintenance. Let's have a look on the following video to introduce the brand new Twin Flow Prime. Welcome everyone, my name is Thomas Reisinger and I am the Director of Mechanical Design for Fibre Preparation Products in the Andritz Paper, Fibre and Recycling Division. Today, I would like to introduce a brand new development in the low consistency refining sector. Here we are in the M4 production shop at our manufacturing location in Graz, also the site of the Andritz Group's head office. My colleague Nick Heckfish is responsible for the assembly of LC refiners and has prepared this new model so that I can tell you all about the technological innovations, the background and the advantages of this brand new development. Behind me is not only my personal pride and joy, but also the pride and joy of the Andritz development team, our new Twinflow Prime Disc Refiner. So, let's get down to business. Andritz has been involved in fiber preparation for many years now, and we have already started up more than 2,000 LC refining plants successfully all over the world. That's why we definitely wanted to stick with the basic principles of the twin flow refiner. By this, I mean a disc refiner with two refining zones, a cantilevered refiner shaft and diverse refiner plate designs in order to accommodate the different pulp properties to the best advantage. What distinguishes the Twin Flow Prime from previous refiner models? In a nutshell, concentrated performance in a very compact design. In other words, the new Twin Flow Prime enhances the energy input, improves maintenance, and increases refiner plate lifetime. How do we do this? I'll show you this directly at the new Twin Flow Prime. We can now see the Twin Flow Prime in the open position. The first impression of the machine shows right away that the overall length has been reduced significantly. The inlet and outlet pipes are in the usual places, but the process area of the machine has been optimized in terms of fluid dynamics. The bearing unit of the Twin Flow Prime has a cartridge design and enables easy maintenance in this area. In this case, the rotating unit can be changed, complete with bearings and seals, without having to lift the Twin Flow Prime or its drive unit out of the foundations. In the standard model, the Twin Flow Prime comes with a mechanical seal, and this also has a cartridge design. The rapid changing system for the refiner plates in the Twin Flow Prime is the system that is well known from previous Twin Flow refiners. In order to adjust the refiner gap of the Twin Flow Prime, one stator refining disc is adjusted, 
one remains in place, and the rotor refining disc with refiner plates on either side adjusts itself automatically, so as to be axially centered between the two stator refining discs, a principle that we already know from previous twin flow refiners. Nevertheless, there is a significant innovation here. It is the way in which the rotor refining disc aligns itself centrally between the two stator refining discs. So far, the rotor refining disc in the twin flow refiner was able to float freely in axial direction on the fixed refiner shaft, on the sliding hub, in the machine's process area. In the twin flow prime refiner, the rotor refining disc has a fixed connection to the refiner shaft and both components move together in axial direction. Axial position compensation between the fixed drive unit and the moving refiner shaft takes place in the coupling between the two units. As a result, there is no longer anything to impede axial movement by the rotor refining disc. Furthermore, the port openings in the rotor refining disc have been enlarged by 70% in the twin flow prime compared to previous twin flow models. This improves the flow to the two refining zones, evens out the input of refining energy to the two refining zones, and prevents one-sided wear on the refiner plates. No uneven wear on refiner plates. Refiner experts know this is one of the keys to longer plate lifetime. And now, how do we manage to build such a compact twin flow refiner? How can we ensure that the rotor refining disc, including the refiner shaft, can float freely in axial direction? Two questions, one answer. A hydrodynamic, water lubricated plane bearing. In this fascinating bearing technology, the shaft is supported on a thin film of water. By using this bearing technology, which has been known for a long time in turbine engineering, we can gain numerous benefits in the twin flow prime. For example, we can reduce the overall length of the twin flow prime by 30% compared to previous twin flow models. This increases the machine stiffness significantly. As a result, we can achieve 25% more energy input. Furthermore, the twin flow prime refiner operates without oil. The sealing water that is always needed serves at the same time as working fluid for the bearing. Another innovation in the twin flow prime refiner is the viscous damping unit. It reliably prevents abrupt movements by the rotor refining disc and also operates with water. I'm sure you want to know what operating results the Twin Flow Prime can achieve in practice. Since November 2019, the 20-inch Twin Flow Prime has been operating successfully in the Andritz Stock Preparation Pilot Plant, and it was able to fully meet the high expectations placed on it. Now we have reached the end of our product presentation. I hope I have succeeded in providing you with a good picture of our new and innovative Twin Flow Prime. If you need further information or wish to contact me, it is my pleasure to invite you to visit our website, andritz.com forward slash tf dash prime. Thank you. brings me to the end of my presentation and directly in the Q&A part. If not already Thanks. done, please take this opportunity to add your questions to the comment section. Sorry for the interruption. <laughs> no problem at all. Thank you very much, Mario. Yes, while you were speaking, <laughs> quite a couple of questions came in and I picked out two for you. So here is the first one. It's about the Twin Flow Prime. Why do you use a sliding shaft instead of a sliding rotor on a fixed shaft, as it's common for LC refiners. Okay, um, at the standard low consistency refiner, the rotor is moving on a fixed shaft. 
in the bulb suspension. Debris or other chemicals like, like calcium oxalate cause bad movement, which will cause uneven wear issues. Okay, and the next question is, is the filtrate quality with the vertical screw thickener better than with a normal screw press? No, it's the same level because same screen basket design is used for the horizontal screw press as well. Okay, thank you very much, Mario. You're we are right moving. <laughs> we are right moving um, from this presentation about stock preparation to the paper machinery part to our next presentation that focuses on big challenges and smart solutions from the machinery part of you. We can already see the first slide. And this presentation is given by Igor Oleschuk, Vice President, Paper and Board Machines. The camera is on. We can see you, Igor. Welcome to our paper webinar and please start your presentation. Thank you, Elizabeth, for the introduction. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the next part of our webinar, uh, Smart Answers to a Big Challenge in Paper and Board Machine uh, Area. Uh, what is a big challenge is uh, the paper industry faced in the last years and facing still today, and we, of course, uh, talk it more or less daily. First of all, uh, of course, the all-time uh, negative decline of publication paper demand, and we was all watching last year during pandemic time, monthly the uh, statistic, and was trying to guess what will be next month and where will we stop. Uh, beside this, of course, many of um, mills who are running these machines thinking to uh, convert it to some other product. And together with the uh, new coming capacity in the packaging sector, this created a rather high pressure on the uh, packaging market. Uh, besides this, of course, there is uh, always the, uh, the question about the raw material. And now we see the raw material prices are going up extremely high and we need to find the answers to this. Uh, besides this, the global trend, uh, which uh, challenging the whole industry uh, in generally, but um, the paper industry uh, also uh, get the impact of this. This is a global trend uh, towards the zero waste. And today we will try to find the answers and we will, uh, Andres, present you our smart answers to this. Um, a bit history. Uh, Andritz in the past and still today was focused on uh, uh, rebuilds and conversions, especially on the uh, full conversions. And um, we did in the past, of course, more or less classical uh, rebuilds from newsprint or super calendared paper to container board. But beside this, uh, to uh, some special grades like a sack craft uh, release paper and uh, some special coated paper. Of course, all of this is possible today, uh, but what we learn out of uh, these jobs and out of this experience, we learn it that sometimes there is a possibility and to really de deliver a big uh, impact with a rather limited efforts, uh, costs, and time. And uh, today we will present you this uh, this part. So basically, uh, we will focus today on the headbox area, in the former section area, in rebuild of the press section area, and drying and finishing. And we will try today to present you in a certain short time uh, what could be really the smart answers and what is the partial thing you could do on a rather quick time to improve the situation. Um, the first part, I have some problem with the presentation. I hope it will be solved. Yes, the first part uh, we are going, I'm going to present is this prime flow AT head box. And now on the picture, you see the uh, trapezoid accelerating tube bank, which uh, provide a unique uh, and superior flow uniformity. And what we can do with this? 
the first thing I would like to present you today um, uh, call a soft layering. What is it? You can see on the picture uh, the, the head box uh, where you can see a two, two layers, the one in red color and one in green color. You can see a dilution in light blue and you can recognize that there is some other kind of dilution contour in the yellow color. And this is exactly a soft layering. So what you can do with this? Actually, the system and looks like a uh, dilution contour, so it's very similar and very simple uh, in terms of uh, re realization of this system. And you can bring uh, different additives, either fiber, chemicals, filler, or fines in between the layers, but you can also bring it on the top and on the bottom. So basically, we dedicate layer and we prepare a head box for the system. And what is important is that uh, any prime flow AT can be equipped with the system or from the beginning or later on uh, after a certain period of time in operation. So uh, this is the uh, unique system on the market and the Andre is the only company who can, who can supply it. Uh, besides this, um, Andritz has a long history with the headbox manufacturing and um, what this also what we do is a regular service on this headbox. And what we realized, there are, there are a lot of head, large fleet of the headbox, good mechanical headbox in the market running quite okay mechanically, so it's no problem with the maintenance with this headbox, but the um, performance in terms of um, jet stability, in terms of the uh, formation, it's not state of the art anymore. And what we can do with this, we can basically implement, and you can see it in the middle, uh, on the uh, head box, the new accelerating trapezoid tube bank. And together with this, we can also implement lamellas and the dilution system. So basically, with a rather limited time and rather limited investment, you can bring your head box uh, to a new life and this will continue uh, to operate for the next years and decades. We are coming to a forming section and uh, I would start from the shoe blade gap former and would start also a bit from the history. So uh, Andritz patented in 2000 this uh, solid ceramic uh, shoe and um, there was a development history then it was implemented in the fine paper then it was a first container board installation uh, came online in 2012 then we continue to develop it then we achieve another important milestone to produce a vertical gap former the uh, great uh, 250 gram per square meter and then the latest references uh, this is a vertical gap former, which is shown in this picture. It's actually a fastest uh, craft line like a former worldwide, which is, uh, has a design speed for uh, 1400 meters and the wire width of 9.2. Actually, these machines show excellent uh, performance and now it's uh, produced uh, more than 80 tons per hour with a perfect quality. And you will ask, what is the practical use of this? What you can do with this? So basically, we see a three different fields where it's really beneficial to have it. Of course, if we talk about the um, new installation, uh, shoe blade gap former could provide a very small footprint with, uh, with uncompromised quality. Uh, but we talk today about smart answers. So, how you can, what you can do with your existing gap former. Basically, uh, with the our solution where we can keep uh, mechanical installation as it is, so framework, rolls, etc., would stay the same. So we would just implement the shoe blade gap forming technology in the forming area. And with this, you have uh, two opportunities. First opportunity, you can find so called escape road. It means you could produce steel kind of publication papers, either it's super calendar or newsprint paper, and you can enlarge the production window and add 
and other are great, for example, some kind of packaging paper. Another thing we could uh, convert it, of course, completely to a packaging paper and uh, increase a lot of capacity due to the, uh, our patented design and due to the um, uh, very high devote rankings. So same philosophy we implement in the hybrid formers and you can see here on the picture uh, the example of this rebuild. So we can easily upgrade uh, the hybrid former from the straight, straight throughs to a high capacity and long, low intensity hybrid former. And you can see in light blue, the parts are added. So a curved uh, hybrid former and the two dewatering boxes. So basically with the existing installation, just inserting uh, some elements, you completely change the area of operation of hybrid former. So uh, what is the benefit of this? The benefit of this, you could really decrease the inlet consistency in the range between 1.2%, improve the formation, improve the quality, and of course, uh, increase the head box flow. I would show you some reference cases. Igor, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, now um, we will try to fix the problem immediately. So please stay in the line, keep your camera turned on and your microphone on, and we will try to uh, show your presentation again in full screen mode. Thank you, Elizabeth. So what we can see now is the slide about the hybrid former. Yes, and... Uh... Uh, basically, uh, Elizabeth, please stop the, the presentation for me. I need to uh, restart the presentation, basically. Yes, of course. No problem at all. In the meantime, we can maybe use the time for some questions that came in in the chat room. So one of them is um, the speed <coughs> of world record craft liner shown on the shoe blade gap former slide is impressive. Is it possible to achieve high quality with just one ply and such high capacity? Igor, did you hear the question? And yes, will you I be hear able the question. To Thanks for the question, Elizabeth. Uh, yes, uh, due to the uh, Andritz patented uh, two shoe design and uh, impingement shoe and variable radius, so we could uh, actually uh, keep the consistency uh, of the head box rather low and with this to uh, achieve really the high ultimate quality uh, with combined with a very high capacity. So meanwhile, I think uh, my presentation is fixed. This is great uh, news. So we see your camera in full screen very mode. Good just to come with a with a necessary slide and okay now i hope you could start to see the slides already yes we see the slide of the hybrid former about partial rebuild by reusing the inverted box uh, you should see the slide with the three showcases yes correct exactly so uh Ladies and gentlemen, sorry for a bit technical problem. Uh, we stop on the showing a showcases and I would like you to show three. And I will introduce the impact on quality and impact on capacity in these showcases. And you can see all these three, it has a partial hybrid former rebuilds. So you can see in light blue what was done on this. So at first is the uh, reference A is a test liner machine. It's a, a high capacity test liner machine, uh, which is running more than 10 and a half tons per hour per meter. And in this uh, rebuild, we increase the bars by 5% and increase the, uh, by 30% the flow of the secondary head box, which is installed in front of the hybrid form. Uh, in the reference uh, B, which is the uh, folding bo box board, 
we could improve the formation by 25% and could increase uh, by 25% uh, a head box flow with, as you for sure remember, the lowering the consistency from 4 to 1.1, uh, sorry, from 2 to 1.1, 1 1.4%. In the reference uh, machine C, it's a bleach sheet uh, board, we could uh, improve the quality, uh, have the good impact on formation, so we'll improve by 30-40% and increase the scope bond by 20%. Together with this, uh, we increase the headbox flow by 20% uh, and also increase dramatically the uh, drainage capacity of hybrid former and you can see how small was the, the hour just impact on this hybrid former. So all these jobs was done rather quick and a limited time and a limited investment. So a next uh, reference I would like to show you, it's in press section and I'm proud to present uh, to you it the first time to the wide audience. So it's uh, uh, our record in terms of the line load shoe press. So it's installed in a company Cartiero Loveno, located in Italy. We have a long successful uh, relationship with this customer and made many projects already together and we have a good trust in between two. So in this company, we installed the world record shoe press, which uh, give the um, nip load of 2000 kilonewton per meter. And with this nip load, a uh, customer could achieve the dryness of 59%. Of course, you can estimate that this is a very big impact on efficiency and on uh, energy, especially energy and efficiency on also on production capacity. Uh, together with this, uh, we was looking also to uh, operation of this machine daily, and we can confirm now that the felt lifetime is unchanged uh, after rebuild, and we could run same lifetime on the felts. And uh, I think it's very important that we as Andres have together machinery also and the machine closing so we can see the full picture. Uh, we continue our journey through the machine and uh, coming to a drying section. So uh, I would like to tell you a few words about the steel dryers. If you know this technology, it's well proven, famous on the market and Andres was one of the pioneers of this. But what today we do differently? Uh, actually, we could go to the uh, high pressure 14 bar, uh, 14.6 was the maximum we delivered, it, but it's actually limited not by a drying cylinder, uh, limited by surrounding, or we could go to a high diameter of 2.2. So with, the, with this uh, solutions or with combination of these solutions, actually we could achieve more than 20% more efficiency and more output from the drying section with keeping the same footprint. And on this picture, you can see the uh, some cylinders of the, um, of the pool we deliver it in uh, North America and they have uh, the, uh, the width of 9.2 meter. Of course, uh, finishing and calendaring, it's very important for us and we still develop it. And where we are focused today? So we focus today on the high flexibility, on different applications, so we can really go with a different paper grade and uh, implement it in release barrier coating, some special coating. Uh, but what else we do? So to shorten the uh, shutdown time and to shorten the installation time, we was focused last year to a compact design and to inbuild the whole system to the machine. So basically the whole system like hydraulic pneumatic control is already pre-assembled and delivered with the machine. And I would like to show you some more details about the, um, the curtain quarter. So we developed the compact design and you can see it here. So actually the new compact design is uh, required by 40% less uh, footprint and have a very uh, simple installation and the web run. So actually it's the um, smallest uh, footprint uh, curtain quarter on the market. And this gives us the possibility to install it very quick, keeping more or less same web run 
and ensures that the startup is quick. Besides this, another smart feature we developed, and you can see it in the light blue rectangle, we call it protected nozzle. So basically, the, in historically, all curtain quarters was required the spear nozzle, and we uh, develop a new design which um, protect the nozzle during the maintenance. It's hard to damage it, and we believe with this uh, the uh, mills could avoid the spear expensive nozzle. So I am end of my presentation in this short time, and now we arrive to uh, questions. Uh, Elizabeth, do we have any questions during my speech? Igor, thank you very much. Yes, quite a couple of questions came in, but unfortunately we are a bit behind the time schedule. So we will include those questions and of course our answers in the Q&A document that will be distributed later and we will switch directly to our thank next you. presentation. Thank you, Igor. So we have already heard about the stock preparation and the paper machine itself. And now we are coming to the fabrics and rolls that are essential parts of the paper making process. The presentation will be about how Andritz fabrics and rolls innovations drive process performance. We can already see the first slide. And this presentation will be given by Stefan Schreiner, Vice President, BMC Fabrics and Rolls. Stefan, right. your camera is on. <laughs> Welcome and please start your presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah, a warm welcome and good morning from my side. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to guide you now through the innovation, what drives us here into process performance. We have been thinking here quite a lot in the shoes of our customers. So therefore, in those chapters, in those five chapters, I'm going to explain you a little bit more why we are doing things and uh, give you also some examples what we have achieved in the market, and that could be also something which is uh, most of interest for you. Looking at the different products I'm going to explain to you, uh, we are starting first of all with PMC. Um, paper machine clothing, we have done a complete new product line, uh, which is transformed in the forming section. In the press section, we have a new Strata press, press belt series. And we will also uh, discuss an interesting case in combination with an input shoe press belt, which we have uh, in the market. Smart rolls, of course, will be also mentioned at the end, but uh, we are also delighted to introduce you the master dry fabrics, which we have been lately introduced into the market. And of course, we will also go a little bit into the details of spreader rolls. Looking first into forming fabrics. Forming fabrics, of course, have certain demands, as you know all well. So first of all, we don't want any marking to see on the papers. Paper formation, fiber retention, and of course, also drainage should be just perfect. Dimensional stability is quite essential in order to achieve a good running time, and fabric life plays an essential role as well. And its fabrics and rolls can offer the most complete product line to the market, starting here with single layers, double layers, warp support binders, which are having less internal wear because of its uh, special binding structure. And those kind of fabrics are not available from all competitors in the market. So therefore, I'm also explaining this a little bit more with an example later. Then we have SSB, today's standard in the market, most of it no longer patented. So I would say state of the art, which is used in most of the applications. And I'm going to introduce you a new patented designs, QSB, Quattro support binder and EDC engineered drainage channel, which offers value. So in the following information, I'm going more on the premium segment. Starting with EDC engineered drainage channel, it's a patented warp system with CD oriented paper side. It's a very low caliper design, which we have, and it is good for a fast initial dewatering. Potential lifetime increase due to warp bound EDC designs is something which was driving us. So therefore we come up here with this new design you see on the left side. It's a 305 binding, which we have here, uh, and uh, a little bit different to the conventional EDC we have with the 203 binding, which you see here on the right side. On the right side, further on, it's a 10% reduced caliber and an improvement of the void volume, which you can ex expect here. 
You see that here in an example with a 25, 16, 30 to a 26, 26, 36 EDC. It's about 20% less void volume, which we have inside of the fabric. Obviously good for high initial dewatering, but also in order to keep the machine clean when operating. The potential lifetime increase which comes with this design is obviously a second advantage. You'd see it if you just look through the picture that also the surface for the paper is an essential improvement which we did. Coming here to a first example, it's a roll blade former, a 1550 meter machine producing fluting 75 to 150 GSM, 100% waste. Our objective here was to improve runnability and performance, the action, replacement of a standard SSB with an EDC forming fabric design. Both chambers of the HV1 we could switch off, which is a maintaining dryness of approximately 22%. And what is also quite interesting, we had this 22% uh, at the control directly at the first day, which is normally occurring after the second day. The reduction of caliper is an obvious advantage in terms of cleanability. You see here 1.13 millimeter with a standard XL SSB design to an 0.95 millimeter with the EDC design, uh, which is obvious. The fabric return run clean and dry was therefore a benchmark which we achieved and the high life potential we had of 13 to 14 weeks, a big advantage for the customer. All in all, the annual savings which we achieved with that were in the range of higher 60,000 euros. Our next important point of our family here is a QSP, Quattro Support Binder Technology. It's again an improvement from the SSB towards this patented and standalone design, which we have, same like with the EDC, we have also here value added in mind, and it's used for medium caliber designs, but also coarse designs. The improved layer binding avoids internal wear, and you see that the stitching points, if you look to the pictures, is in the QSB about double what you have in the standard SSB design. Also here an example, uh, replacing a warp bound design with a QSB in order to improve the machine runnability. We had here an increase of the lifetime from formerly 60 to 80 days to 120 days, which is a significant improvement and the warp bound topped fabric were just running also with a very good potential due to its uh, cross stability which it has of 100 days. Annual savings we generated here were 70,000 euros. Another interesting example here with an hybrid form of machine running at 750 meter a minute and it's producing liner white top line and corrugated medium and you have here uh, as you see, the improve of the runnability, which we had in mind, they operated already here from the drive load at 100% and the usage of a warp bound structure, including E-line energy saving yarn materials, uh, we had in mind in order to improve the situation. What we achieved here is the energy saving of the 150 kilowatt allowed us to increase the vacuum levels, which had been reduced because of the drive load missing. Higher vacuum improved the line of ply bonding and allowed us a reduction of the ply bond additives. And the increase of the lifetime was just a further surplus which we gained here. The SSB top run at the same time stable and without any big trouble. And we generated on that machine um, savings of more than 100,000 euro, which have been confirmed by the customer. Press performance. Also here, quite important, you see that on the video, laminate and also single layer uh, press felts. We are using and um, pushing more in the direction of the single layer fabrics due to obvious advantages. First, you have no this moire effect, which you see here with the laminate. Second, you see also that the dewatering is going here without any disturbances. We are adding to our press felt designs here certain add-ons and uh, technology like the QS technology, here we are talking about twisted material, twisted yarns, which we have. These twisted yarns we are manufacturing here in our uh, Rocknitz facility, which is the biggest European press felt um, uh, manufacturing site that is in the market. If you look here to the middle point, you see, it, you see the high perm technology. It is uh, something which is ensuring us a very smooth surface design of the press felt, and therefore also here quite essential for paper quality. 
last but not least, the booster technology to the right is good for a fast startup of the press field and to get um, the, the desired results. Coming a little bit more into detail about Stratopress SX, it's again a patented and standalone technology which we have. It is a seam felt design, as you can see, and it has a middle layer of light yarn, seam loop forming the top and the bottom, and the CMD monofilament for best stability. The MD monofilament on top and bottom side of the triple layer is um, a construction for the loop formation, and the MD middle layer consisting of flight monofilament is improving the bed fiber anchorage. On the right side, you see two pictures. The first one on the top shows you that we have here the pin seam in, and what is quite important, it is so tightly um, uh, embedded in uh, that you have almost no visible marking on the paper. This is also after 10,000 cycles of using it, you see also here that we have even so no marking problematic on the paper side. So therefore it can be used on all paper uh, uh, and, and, and uh, packaging grades which we have here um, to offer. Further, you look here into impulse through press belt technology, which is quite important for the case study I'm showing to you in a minute. It is um, the um, new polyurethane technology that we put together, and it has all kinds of service designs which are here available from blind truth, blind truth and grooved, only grooved, interrupted grooved, and it is a standalone material which we are using here as well, uh, which offers here a superior crack resistance. Looking here into the case study, you see here a shoe press with 350 to 580 meter a minute, producing board in the range of 220 to 400 GSM. And we had here the objective to eliminate the nit flooding and delamination and blister problems in second press position. We use our resolve program, which allows us to model the press situation. You put in here the data regarding to the paper, we have in also the, regarding to felts and also rolls or true press belt surfaces like here in this case. We consider the best possible combination of the felt design and also the shoe press venting and the introduction of the impulse shoe press belt in blind drilled and groove design was what we finally went for. The resolve calculation shows double layer seam felt with 1800 GSM which we could finally use and we could go a step backwards from the formerly used triple layer design in 1950 GSM, an obvious additional saving which we achieved. The results, stable and improved board quality and machine runnability without nip flooding and blisters, and an improved shoe press belt runnability with blind drilled and groove design, savings of more than 80,000 euros. You see here on the right side, the total press void volume Formerly, after 40 days, we had to take out the, uh, the felt. And uh, with the construction and the improvements which we did, we had here a stable run after 60, we could achieve. Further, there should be not only shoe presses in the market, but we have also heavy duty presses still. And uh, here we have a new technology in the polyurethane area, Quantum Extreme, which has a very low hysteresis. It remains cooler under pressure load and the special fusion high performance bonding system allows that we can operate this kind of cover technology even without cooling of a roll, which is an essential benefit and saving for a customer. Also here, an example. We had here the objective to improve the watering and the press section and increase here from 46 to 47%. We consider the press felt, the row cover and also the venting design. And uh, here with the resolve calculation, which we did upfront for the first and second press, we consider then a blind shot and groove design, which is uh, something which we can do with this kind of polyurethane technology, however, not with a conventional rubber cover, which is used here in this kind of applications usually. The starter passes X uh, felt design, which we used here on 1800 GSM, uh, was uh, in, in the uh, operation as well. Reduction of Uli box vacuum and increase of nip dewatering was an advantage which we gained here and wanted to have too. Results, row cover service interval for blind world rubber covers improved. The quantum PU from the 10 months to the 18 months, which is a significant improvement. And let me add here also, after three to four times, you have to recover a, a, a rubber cover, 
That is not the case here for this quantum PU cover, which we used. We're able to shut off the disassemble the roll cooling system and the strata based seam felt saturation optimized by van shower adjustments was also something which we could achieve. Improved dryness by 1.3%, annual savings about 95,000 euros. On the right side, you see here in the picture, even after that long run of the 18 months, you see that almost no change on the surface is in comparison to a new ground and freshly installed cover. Drying fabrics. It's the latest innovation which we brought into the market under the product name of Master Dry. Large contact area here with less contamination options on the surface, a single layer uh, fabric design for easy cleaning, a rectangular yarn for high wear resistance, and an open fabric structure, which is again easy to keep clean. On the right side, you see an example of a Spiro seam 5DH, which is ensuring that we have a homogeneous surface and that, of course, the same fabric caliber is maintained with the body and that uh, the seam has here the same niveau. It is a strength of 600 newton per centimeter, which is also important to uh, stably run and operate the machine. Safety lock system for edge protection is here also introduced in case the fabric should get a damage and the edges that it's not propagating and tearing apart. Also here a case of a single run group bigger than 1500 meter minute machine. It's packaging papers, lightweight packaging, 70 to 120 GSM. And uh, the objective was to improve running time. And what we achieved here actually with uh, the results is with Master Dry, we could go to 90 days running time. It's a plus of 20 days that the customer achieved before. The roll side wear profile still at a moderate level and the quite clean surface, as you can see it on the picture, reduced the risk of paper sheet breaks. So annual savings due to longer running time and the reduction of risk of paper sheet breaks is an obvious advantage which we gained here. In the last chapter, I would like to introduce you some important uh, family members of our products, which are smart. Smart technology innovations here in terms of spreader rolls is quite an obvious advantage because spreader rolls are used in all kinds of positions on a paper machine. If you have that under safe control, your machine operational time and efficiency, you don't need to worry about. If not, then it can mean for a big machine quite some additional efforts which you have to calculate. We therefore came up here with XLife LS spreader rolls. They have inside of uh, uh, the roll the option that you grease or put a, a drop of uh, oil to each of the bearing, maintaining the original grease in its circumstances like it had been before and therefore you can prolong significantly the lifetime. So the extended warranty which you can give with 24 months after installation, latest 36 months after shipment, is an advantage to conventional roles with 12, 18 months. We have used that for instance in international paper. Also here with the design change, we came here from a smaller diameter to a 500 millimeter diameter roll and had an additional advantage um, because we came out of uh, the typical frequency where the machine starts to vibrate. And therefore we had here also uh, that done. Um, then further here with Pine Word PM6 where we are using that kind of technology. And may I mention also the latest one which is going on stream soon in Pine Island PM5, the new machine which is currently in startup phase. On the right side you see here monitor options with the spreader rolls where we can insert here temperature sensors and also vibration sensors. Both of uh, it is of course in a combination an advantage to predict early enough if there is any trouble coming up in a spreader roll. And you can also have that on a professional software that is indicating wall bearing damages before you even know it. Further and uh, uh, to our smart series, I'd like to speak a little bit about Smart Connect. You see that here that we have the possibility to embed our sensors in almost all kinds of row covers. It's only in metalized covers where we cannot. All the others we can, and it's also for all machine positions. It includes sensor technology, uh, which is measuring real-time nip conditions, affecting paper sheet quality and the machine performance. We have been doing that on shoe presses, on conventional presses, on size presses, 
of any kind. And the advantage you gain is not only to see the profile of the road, you can also directly adjust if there is anything not adjusted to uh, the, the right position. And that before a road cover shows the damage. With Resolve here on the right side, I was talking about it earlier, we are going also now here the next step and we'll embed this into matrix. Here you gain here additional uh, advantages for analytical modeling of row cover and press felt related nip and dewatering conditions. So stay tuned. It was a pleasure for me to focus here with you on this smart technology and I'm now ready to take any questions if there are. Stefan, thank you very much for this great presentation. Yes, while you were speaking, quite a couple of questions came in. And here is the first one for you. Resolve is now getting smart. What does this mean? Yeah, thank you for that question. It's a quite important uh, inf information or a question you have here. And uh, if you look uh, to the program, it was for modeling um, of press wells you had in also uh, the details about paper, you have the row cover, the venting, and also in a shoe press situation, this, the shoe uh, sleeve uh, uh, and its, its venting construction. What we do now is we will embed this into matrix in order to have directly foreseeable and online here additional information when the machine is up and running. And that is allowing us to give you an additional advantage in terms of corrective measures, adjustments you may want to do, or any optimizations of uh, the press section. Thank you. And there is another question. What surface designs are you offering for impulse shoe press belts? If you look to impulse shoe press belts, we are offering all kinds of market um, available designs. We have blind drilled, we have grooved, we have a combination of blind drilled and grooved. We have also interrupted groove designs, which we are using. And if you look to the groove designs, it's a U or a V uh, shape, which we can generate. What we finally pick or recommend to customers greatly depends, of course, on the application, on the machine and on the paper grade produced. And it's a pleasure for us to look into it together with you and our Resolve program to find here the right setup and design for your machine. Thank you, Stefan. Thank you very much. We are now coming to the next presentation. We have covered major areas of the paper making process. And we must not forget a highly dynamic, futuristic topic, automation and digitalization. Our next speaker will be Gerald Steiner, Vice President of Metris Solutions for Paper. Gerald, uh, we can already see the first slide of your presentation from remote startup services to risk-based management. Your camera is on. Welcome to our webinar and please start your presentation. Thank you, Elisabeth. Hello and good morning from Graz. Uh, within the next 20 minutes, it will be a pleasure for me to introduce our innovative and cost efficient solutions and services from the world of automation and digitalization. But before we go into the technical details, let's take a brief look into the history. Why history? Because Unreads might be well known as a machinery and equipment supplier, but we also provide uh, and are very proud on our automation and digitalization experience, uh, starting already uh, with classical automations already in the 80s. At that time, uh, we served the industry with third party systems. Uh, I will come to that a little bit later when we talk about our TCS, why this is important. But in 2007, uh, that was also a major uh, step for Unreads because at that time we introduced uh, our advanced performance services, which we call optimization for process performance, which actually was the starting point of using digital tools for process optimization uh, with our, in our Unreads competence. So uh, within the latest years, quite a lot of developments have been made. Uh, we bundled all our automation and digitalization activities under the Matrix brand. Uh, in 2018, we started the development of our own Android's uh, TCS, uh, where I'll talk a little bit about in a few minutes. And uh, within the last year, uh, we gave us the ambitious target to strive for autonomous operation uh, and starting uh, with maximum process automation. So we are all aware 
of the megatrend industry 4.0 it has been established or we are talking about since many years about that our strength for this megatrend is that we are as hundreds uh, we are combining all relevant competencies uh, from domain know-how over automation and digitalization and all of that really on an excellent level so our domain competence uh, has already been proven my colleagues so i think you got really deep insight about those uh, special competences in the different areas so i would like to make a check mark on that so now it's a little bit up to me uh, to do the same with automation and digitalization so when we take a look on our offering uh, and you just saw before uh, that in order to have really a holistic view we need domain competence automation and digitalization finally we would like to achieve autonomous operations and what we can offer here is from our platform metris which is a holistic all-in-one automation and digitalization platform with an open architecture which uh, fits uh, for a middle-wide optimization approach as well as we can establish that on an enterprise level and uh, with an embedded ot cybersecurity concept so this is uh, getting more and more important and i would say uh, at these times this is already a must have uh, if you are doing digitalization and automation on a professional level so in this platform we have an embedded dcs what we call matrix x which is an hpc based control system uh, with the major advantage of being hardware independent i will elaborate a little bit on that uh, in the dcs part and this is suitable for greenfield projects and also uh, we can do very cost efficient and and very fast uh, on the fly brownfield migration projects with our matrix x solutions so also uh, embedded in that platform not only a dcs solution but we are very proud on our 50 or more than 50 applications which we have in different focus areas such as asset performance process analytics process optimization production management and on top of that uh, we have a quite sophisticated competence in simulation and digital twins uh, one example is our dcs operator training simulator uh, which is used uh, when dcs systems are exchanged in order that people are trained in advance so that you have the smoothest and fastest startup without losing any capacity so this is rounded up with our performance services uh, we have quite a big bunch of different capabilities from cyber security as mentioned before it gets more and more important we can deliver that as managed services we have a 24 7 hotline in place we have our performance centers which i will touch especially on the topic of remote startup and commissioning also our expert availability via our performance center and our hundreds academy uh, for training and for know-how sharing with our customers so in the end uh, we are all striving for a long-term partnership with you our customers uh, we have uh, quite different business models and a flexible approach uh, we can cover the full life cycle of your assets of your automation assets uh, we also would like to target to achieve the lowest total cost of ownership with our approach and as mentioned we are quite flexible from automation as a service over a conventional capex approach and last but not least uh, our uh, opp approach where we locally deploy engineers in order to optimize uh, your process performance so within this webinar we will cover some of those topics so i will talk a little bit about uh, our special benefits of our own hundreds dcs solution uh, as it was in the title uh, we will go in the details of risk-based management which is part of asset performance in the end i will just shortly present our latest release in the area of simulation and digital twins and also we will take a, a brief look uh, how a remote startup uh, can turn into reality so starting with the platform i will not talk too much about our platform i mentioned it already before this is how our platform looks like from uh, a user interface so this would be the front end the landing page you see a bunch of those 50 applications uh, that we have here in place 
uh, depends a little bit, of course, on the end user, on the user group. So those applications are suitable for different user groups, dependent on the task, what needs to be done in order to get the best performance of a mill. So from mill managers over production managers down uh, to the field operators, maintenance managers are also important as we will see it in the risk-based management application. So starting with our Android DCS, I mentioned it uh, in the history, we started quite early with deploying third party systems quite successfully in the industry with a huge list of references and uh, with the demand uh, and combining automation and digitalization, we decided to develop our own uh, DCS based on that experience that we gained with all those system integrations. So we took the best out of that systems that are established in the market and put it into one system together. So Metris X is an HPC based distributed control system with all functionalities that uh, existing market system having, but also of course with some special benefits and some things that, that are that's differentiating us from the, from the big huge DCS suppliers that are well known in the market. So we are really flexible because our system is vendor hardware, vendor independent. What's the, what does that mean? So if you already have a certain preference, on your hardware, uh, which typically is existing because each meal has a certain history. So that can be reflected uh, with our system that you use the hardware uh, of your preferred supplier. And on top comes our DCS system, or even uh, if you have an island uh, with quite new IO system, you can reuse that. And this ensures maximum flexibility. Also, uh, in, in those times, we know that sometimes automation resources are a bottleneck and uh, with an efficient use of these resources via a modern software approach, which is more configuration than programming, we also can contribute uh, to your success. As mentioned before, with our integrated simulation tool, we can ensure faster startups. I mentioned that before, that is quite a successful product. So on the one hand, we train operators before the DCS migration has happened in a real environment. So they can really test uh, uh, situations in reality. And also uh, once the system is running, uh, these systems are used in order to really test critical situations so that they are always prepared if anything happens uh, and not then those people uh, need to work under stress in a critical moment. And uh, the last benefit that I would like to address here is that we of course are looking for highest process efficiencies with our DCS. Why with our DCS? Because we integrated uh, quite uh, uh, a big uh, library of advanced process controls. And in addition to that, uh, we added AI functionalities directly in the DCS system. How does that look like? Uh, you might, of course, know those things that on the left side, you have the conventional, I would say, functional diagram. So the engineering surface for the automation engineers and very often totally separated. Uh, if you have one of these expert systems uh, where your data scientist is working with machine learning within an AI toolbox. Uh, in our DCS solutions, we are combining those two worlds and the AI functionalities are embedded in one system, which uh, of course uh, has certain advantages. So the intuitiveness of these AI tools are done in that way that the automation engineer uh, with the target given by production managers and technologists can simply integrate uh, AI-based models in the DCS directly. I brought one case example that that gets a little bit more tangible. Uh, so let's think about a continuous freeness control. Uh, there is already an advanced refiner control in place. So we see here the inline uh, freeness measurement uh, with an uh, analytical tool that uh, delivers every 20 minutes a value. Uh, and what is now the benefit uh, with these AI embedded functionalities? 
So we have that in one uh, surface, in one system, and by uh, adding process data and lab data together with this analyzing data from the freeness analyzer, we can simply develop in the DCS environment a freeness model uh, that will later on uh, give a signal into the process control. And this uh, 20 minutes delay uh, will be eliminated and we have a continuous control. So we all know that within 20 minutes, the furnish and the process conditions can totally change. And if we are not bridging that 20 minutes, we could have quite different fiber properties in the end. So our solution uh, delivers a better furnish quality due to a precise control in between. Uh, of course, in the end, then you will uh, get an optimized energy consumption for the defined fiber properties. And what is also nice, that there is an automated remodeling functionality embedded, uh, which can be adjusted in terms of the demand of the control on an hourly basis, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. So there is no additional work for this to be done. And everything uh, what we are doing is in one single engineering environment. So now let's come a little bit to the next topic, maintenance. Uh, we have a really fancy application uh, for maintenance. We call it uh, risk-based management. And before I show you a little bit some results, uh, let's take a look into a short movie in order to understand how that solution actually is working. What if you could have an all-in-one doctor who has full who has knowledge, knowledge about, about every special of human, of human body, body science, science. And more. and more, what if this, what doctor, if this doctor could summarize, could summarize and, wait and wait all relevant, all relevant details relevant from every cell of your body immediately? This doctor would evaluate the data and take preventive actions before any disease shows up. This is not possible yet for our body, but is a reality for industrial mills. Metris Risk-Based Management identifies the overall risks up front, proposing the right tasks for fixing and therefore avoiding unnecessary interruptions. Professional Asset Performance Management is a challenging process and a complex interaction of various disciplines in order to avoid unplanned shutdowns, which might cause losing millions of dollars per day. The overall risk is typically calculated as impact multiplied by its probability. Traditionally, the Asset Performance Management System focuses only on specific and separated single assets to analyze their data, not taking into account that maybe some other areas need a higher attention due to their influence of the overall production behavior. Like each human body, a mill is a very complex system where lots of process areas with different functionalities are interconnected and perform as their best together once they are synchronized properly. In industrial mills, many separated systems are working traditionally in parallel with a clear focus only on their respective assets. Metris risk-based management has an integrated mill-wide approach considering condition monitoring of all critical assets, calculation of individual production risks, supervising maintenance activities, process conditions of the running assets, in order to calculate which assets have the most critical impact to the overall mill availability. The Metris Risk-Based Management app calculates and displays all potential risk impacts in one graphical mill-wide overview to guide the production and maintenance managers to prevent unnecessary and expensive business losses. In addition, the supervision of the control loops reflecting the mechanical behavior has an impact on the overall mechanical risk calculation. Like bacteria and viruses could invade any time and anywhere the human bodies, it is necessary to analyze and prevent the hazardous potential as best as possible. A well-functioning immune system is in any case a basis to proactively react on unforeseen attacks in order to avoid unplanned shutdowns causing huge losses. In addition to standard hardware-related risks, maintenance and inspection work. Also, the cybersecurity risk levels are taken into consideration. The Metris Risk-Based Management app integrates the cyber risk potential of unsecured automation assets while also showing possible way to fix it. The availability of the vulnerability factor for each automation asset is the basic information for the calculation of the overall cybersecurity risk factor. Metris Risk-Based Management focuses on a mill-wide risk level based on hardware-related issues, maintenance and inspection works, 
calculation of individual production risks, cybersecurity risk. It's a comprehensive app that gives a detailed representation of each asset focusing on high-risk assets and therefore avoiding unplanned shutdowns. Metris risk-based management secures your overall asset health the same way as an all-in-one doctor, which has an ultimate knowledge about each cell and functionality in human bodies. So, welcome back. I think that was quite a good first impression how this uh, application risk-based management actually works. I would like to go again a little bit into the details, just what is the typical situation in paper mills. So typically there are these uh, different data silos. So there is process data, maybe even stored in a data historian. There is the maintenance management software, the CMMS system also, which is a data silo. And then maybe some scattered single application, a condition monitoring system and so on. So with our approach, with matrix risk-based management, we actually are uh, combining those data silos and have uh, all the relevant data available uh, into one application. And what we are doing is that we assign a risk factor on an asset level based on the criticality and risk to operations. So what is the benefit? Of course, uh, on the one hand, this secures highest asset availability. Uh, on the other hand, uh, with this embedded cybersecurity, and this should not be underestimated, uh, this is really getting more and more a threat to the industry. Uh, we have a really unique approach, actually, that we are embedding this cybersecurity uh, vulnerability check continuously into the calculation of our asset uh, risk factor. We ensure with this uh, application, of course, the excellent efficiency of often limited maintenance resources uh, so that those people really can focus on the right assets. And that's in the end an ideal contribution uh, in order to achieve uh, the lowest specific maintenance costs, but still achieving the highest possible uh, availability in order to have, I would say, the best possible balance sheet in your mill. So two cases in order to see what we could achieve with those kind of installations. Uh, so the scope was for both this uh, confidential cases that we established the risk-based management application together with matrix wipe wireless vibration sensors. In the first case, uh, we could achieve uh, a savings of 100,000 euros just because of the elimination of various conveyor issues. In the second case, which I think is pretty impressive, uh, the customer could avoid 1.4 million uh, within nine months uh, in terms of costs for loss of production and maintenance. And this, this gives an impressive ROI of close to three over the nine months. So you see in here the front end of our application. Uh, these are the risk factors in here. Uh, and based on that, you can make the deep dive and take a look which uh, risk out of these different data silos is relevant. In that case, it's related uh, to a vibration sensor, but also at the percentage of cyber risks of the CMMS of open work uh, flows and so on. And also, of course, the data from the, the DCS itself is reflected in all those calculations here, and you can make a simple deep dive uh, what is actually contributing to the high risk factor. So coming a little bit to the topic of remote commissioning, but let's first start a little bit with the history of our performance centers. Uh, the good thing for Andritz is that we were really well prepared for this current uh, difficult situation. So already uh, before uh, the, the pandemic, we actually have established several performance centers. We are now having 15 performance centers globally distributed, which is enabling us uh, to have real-time communication with latest online and AR tools to capture the overall on-site situ situation. We also, and that's again important, uh, we have a fast and protected collaboration. So all of those connections are uh, really proven and uh, safe in terms of, of cyber risks. Uh, we can then guide uh, with these uh, remote technologies, either mill operators or hundreds personnel on site. And this is in a way the prerequisite 
of startup services and startup and remote startup commissioning. So what we can say, uh, remote commissioning is reality today. And this is made possible with all the technologies that are available in the market. Uh, we built in features as well in order to ensure the excellent Android quality and also uh, things like factory testing. So uh, from the delivery uh, and erection via the Matrix Performance Center connection with the installation of virtual support tools, uh, with the remote guidance for on-site staff and the access of experts from various hundreds locations, we can execute that remote com commissioning and remote startup. Uh, so for you as a customer, uh, you will still get a reliable project execution and we stick to our schedules despite those difficult uh, general conditions what we are currently having. Uh, we have highest security standards embedded with this authenticated access for accredited personnel only. And uh, with our uh, worldwide network of hundreds experts, we really can assure optimum starter support. And uh, also on top of that, uh, we have then shortest response times due to the elimination of time consuming travel. So two case histories that we are having, uh, we have already successfully commissioned a complete bailing line uh, uh, in last August and also uh, two tissue machine have been uh, remotely commissioned. And I just want to tell a very brief story because uh, certainly all I would say uh, startup engineers have, have been, I would say, a little bit skeptic if that could work at any time. And I was talking with one of those engineers who has 30 years experience in the business in starting up machines. And he said, this will never work. Then uh, a COVID came. One month later, he was sitting in the performance center, actually uh, executing the first shoe press uh, remote commissioning. And he was so impressed by the technology uh, that he went back home uh, to the site where he is located. And he said to the ma managing director that he should immediately ask for investment to establish also one of those uh, performance center at his site because that makes life so easy and so efficient. Just a, a really happened internal story out of that. So coming to our just latest baby, what we have just released uh, some weeks ago, uh, we have developed a soft sensor builder, which we call the Matrix Digital Twin app. So that's a really, really cool thing. Uh, this new intuitive Matrix Digital Twin app allows the configuration of soft sensors in just four easy steps. And I have to tell uh, one story out of my, uh, say, practical experience. So I have worked also in a paper mill uh, for 10 years. And already, I think it was roughly uh, 12, 13 years ago, uh, we, we tried to work with the first uh, soft sensors at that time. And uh, it took us, I think, in total some months, actually, uh, in order to uh, develop uh, these soft sensors. And now with this uh, digital twin app, it's possible to do that just in a few minutes. So what you're getting is you have a competitive advantage because if you want to keep your know-how and not use our comprehensive uh, advanced process control library. Uh, so you can use our soft sensor builder. The know-how stays within your company and you can also uh, then make your own control strategies out of that. As mentioned, the minimized efforts for the creation and the maintenance uh, and also a simple and fast feasibility assessment. So how accurate is actually the soft sensor? Is it really suitable? Can I use it later on for a control? And we have a feature ranking uh, in this soft sensor, which can give you valuable insights and hints for process optimization due to the transparent soft sensor feature ranking. So that was. Yeah, right. in <laughs> Sorry, I see you're already coming to the end. I know it's quite tricky to pack such a lot of news in such a short time frame. Unfortunately, we have a small delay. So please say the closing words of your presentation. Yeah, thanks for your attention. And the only thing would I just say, please uh, uh, order uh, some equipment from my colleagues that you can experience with after they get together the remote commissioning. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Gerald. Due to time reasons, we will skip the Q&A session. And ladies and gentlemen, now we are coming to the end of our webinar. I hope you enjoyed watching the presentations and taking part. A few days after the webinar, you will receive an email with the download link to the material. And now my colleague Igor will make some brief closing remarks and then officially end the webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, thank you, Gerard, for speech. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are arriving to the end. On uh, behalf of Andrit's team, I would like to express my gratitude to all of you who came together from various meals from various uh, countries and for your participation, which has enabled us to uh, conduct today a fruitful webinar. Uh, we have today listened to the Andrit's expert uh, who presented the cost efficiency innovation in the paper making. Mario talked a bit. Uh, about the new development in the stock preparation, in screening, refining, sickening, and uh, cleaning. I explain you uh, how we Andrits see a smart answers to a big challenges in the paper machine, paper and board machines. Then uh, Stefan uh, show the how to boost uh, performance and drive the innovations in, in in paper production with a patented unique design fabrics and sleeves and rolls. And then finally, Gerald presented our matrix uh, digital solution uh, with which you can uh, improve the efficiency of your production has a, a access and even now more uh, can be sure that the machines will be started up even remotely. Apart from the innovation presented today, uh, what differentiates us from the others? Uh, why you added value to working with us? We can cover a full uh, paper mill from the different raw material, either chips, locks, recycled fiber, or market bales, different kinds of stock preparations, craft mill, mechanical mills, or the uh, OCC stock preparation lines. Uh, full paper machines and rebuilds together with uh, smart transfers and the partial rebuilds and of course on top of this a complete digitalization automation and uh, wide uh, package of services and machine closing so i think we are proven that we are ready for the challenges we are ready for the uh, new innovations and we drive these innovations we have a good examples and Gerald show in the pandemic time when we started up a complete tissue paper machine with the perform performance centers. And we also did uh, some other impressive things as for example, in one uh, customer, we rebuilt the ground wood, uh, pulp, uh, the ground wood line to the mechanical pulp, uh, pulping line uh, with a completely remote startup. And we are only one who can really do it. Like Volga said uh, from the, with his welcome speech from the beginning of webinar, the unprecedented times ask for unprecedented measures and action. I think today we are proven that we are ready to do it. And um, on this word, I would like to thank you. Unfortunately, uh, the format of webinar doesn't allow us to the, uh, take all to real technical details. So, don't hesitate to ask us for a, a dedicated technical meeting where we, we can go to every details. And I wish you to stay healthy, to stay safe and the good rest for the day. Thank you for joining us today.